So one of the things I have is, I actually have a guide I made that's very explicit about installing Zotero. And so, like, here's what you can do in the beginning. And then it actually says, play with it first before you continue to the next couple of steps. And so it's, I tried to make this as detailed and, and like, down to earth as possible. Um, and the reason why you see these parallel structures is just because Zotero and JuraSM are essentially the same, but JuraSM does a little more. And you could even start with Zotero, and then if you just o installed over top of it with the JSN, you'd have no problems. So I tried as, as best I could to sort of walk you through it. I tried to add multimedia to make you feel comfortable with it. And Adam, would you say that the only reason to consider JurisM is if you're a strong multilingual user? If you're, a, if you're heavily used multilingual uh, sources, or sources not in English in particular. I don't know, you can't hear it. But I tried to make things a little more easier to work with than just long blocks of text. but. Um, different levels of, of use. So, okay. Um, where's my Zotero? And, and I say Zotero and Juris M interchangeably. So, for example, uh, I have a little note here for myself. So, I'm, I'm just using Japanese because that's the language I know, but uh, I told myself to look up this, this article in CINI, which is a Japanese database. And so just to kind of show you what it's like to pull in a multilingual article, so do that, switch this, should come up. And luckily it's open access. So uh, in this database, if I switch it to Japanese, it presents the data a little differently to me. So I wanna, I wanna import this information, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my little icon here that says Save to Zotero. And it, will not have pulled in the um, English at the same time, but you'll see here, it actually saved a snapshot. It didn't attach a PDF to it. This isn't actually quite what I want, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this from my collection. And the, oh, actually it did pull in the Japanese, perfect. So I do wanna pull it in Japanese because it takes a lot more time to type in Japanese than in English, but what I can do is, um, so I wanna have a multilingual setup, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this information. I'm not going to give myself more work. So what I'm going to say is, first of all, I'm going to tell it that the document is Japanese. And then this is with the Juris M enhancements, but I want to set the field language to Japanese. And then I want to add a variant in romanization. Or actually, nope, I want to make it in English because it's a translation. So it's saying this is the Japanese title because I said it earlier to be Japanese. This is the English title. And then if I actually wanted to, I could go even further and uh, add variant, yeah, Romani Romanized. So this would be, I'd have to sit down and like type Pikutoram Niyoru. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you get the idea. So this is the part where the, you don't necessarily escape the labor of the issue. So for those of you working with non-Roman languages, they often don't have metadata setups where you can just conveniently grab all this stuff. So you may find, like you may have to do this, and this goes back to the workflow thing, like do you know you have to do this for your report, for your dissertation, for the art of your organization? If you don't have to do it, then don't give yourself more work. Um, I know that I would actually have to have the romanization, so I would have to sit down and type all this out. I would do the same thing for author, and I'd have the chance to set the field language to Japanese, add a variant in, in romanization, and then I could do their name twice and go forward like that with that process. But you can see here it sort of starts to indicate it to you. So for me, just by the nature of my work, I'm kind of forced into these slower workflows. Like I'm not gonna get around a lot of this stuff. They don't always have all the copying and pasting that I would like. Um, so that's just to give you a taste of the multilingual stuff. I would say once you feel more comfortable with the advanced features, you're good to go. If I can, actually let me see if I can find. So I have a very uh, advanced setup with, let's see, this plus, yeah. So um, you'll see here that some of these uh, items have links on them and some of them don't. So this means, I, I use something called Zotfile, and Zotfile is how I can do that um, annotating and auto-extract the notes. 
And then because I'm insane, I take all of those notes and put them in Excel and then tag them according to topic and then I sort them by topic and then I write my literature review that way. But that's me and I'm crazy. I don't know if I would recommend that to everybody. But um, this link means that it is, Zafile is uh, moving everything over to a special folder that I told it to do. So I've, if I say, um, do you have an easy time moving files around in your directories and subdirectories on your computer? Does that, does that sentence make sense to you? And does that sentence make no sense to you? If it made sense, then you can do this. If it made no sense, don't use it. There, there's uh, levels of uh, skill involved. So what I can say is uh, show, oops, not show in library. Where did my sentence But you can actually ask it to, control A, shift plus. I can ask it to uh, show, show, ah, damn it, sorry. <laughs> I blame myself. Should, no, actually, let's get that one. That one. Here we go. So what I mean to click on is show file, and it shows me where in my computer I'm keeping it. And so what I did was, uh, does anybody have a Google Drive account or a Dropbox account? Everybody has Google Drive. Do, you. do yeah. you guys have the actual installations installed onto your computer? So like you can have it passively, but you can also install Google Drive onto your computer as a program that will auto-sync things. Mm -hmm. So basically this Zotero folder is in my Google Drive, and I've told Zotfile and Zotero, they're you have to go to the preferences for both of those programs. And I told it, look at this folder. So when I find something I want, I, it knows to either send it here or I download it to here for, for future use. And there's different workflows that affect that. But um, here it is, it, it found it for me. So instead of saving it to Zotero's library, which maxes out at three megabytes, which over an academic career is nothing, <laughs> um, it, I put it in Google Drive, which our CU affiliated Google Drives, at least for staff and faculty, is infinite, so that works out really nice. And it keeps it here for me. So if I do you want to maybe show the zap file preferences of where you would yeah, it? let me let me jump back to that. Um, and I just want to show quickly. So this is uh, not kept in my Zotero folder, but I want to move it. So manage attachments is a zap file extension. I just hit rename. And it's just going to take it and it'll flip it to this. And it just moved it into my Z Zotero account for me. So if you're deciding to make this transition when you already have some things, that's how you start moving everything over. But um, what you get is you have preferences and Zot file preferences. So I'll show you Zot file for a moment. And that um, Zotero guide I showed you, it discusses all of this in detail. So I want I want a custom folder. Check here. Um, I want to use it in a custom location, sent it to the same place. And you have it set as your watch file. So anything yeah. that's saved there will get pulled in automatically. Yeah, so, so this is this is where basically this box says tells Zotero and Zotfile to monitor this folder. And this one says, please send things to this folder if they're not already there. And then there's a slightly advanced setting where in, and again, this is all explained in great detail in the um, in the website we have for you. But this is the regular Zotero preferences. And one of the things I have to tell it to make sure to do is files and folders. I have to tell it to uh, use, because Zotero has its own default base directory. I told it to use my Google Drive folder as the base directory. Um, does anybody have their Mendeley or Zotero libraries on two computers? Probably not. So I have I have three computers actually. I have to do this three times. I have to make sure all these settings match on three different machines. So that's something to be aware of. So there is this level of technical competence that comes with this. But if you just use one computer, then it's much more straightforward. I was going to ask um, your base directory is that just kind of a catch-all? Yeah. So so you can do different preferences. So what? No further organizing. No. So this is how I look at it, right? Um, under the Zot file preferences. There's this weird little option here. So what this says is make a subfolder based on this. You can read the technical information about it. So this is like the journal title and the year of publication. And it'll when you send it over to your base directory, it makes a new folder and puts the PDF there. I don't bother with that. I just deactivate it. So I just have one long list of PDFs, and that's what I want personally. You have to decide for yourself if you 
do or don't want that. I say this is better because it's simpler, and I also think it's silly because if you do that, not only are you this world, this in Zotero, I've already created the collections I don't need. I don't need to do it twice by taking my Zotero folder, which just to show you what it looks like, there's the Google Drive app, there's the Zotero one. I'm not going to do that again here. So I, for me, I don't care that my my uh, PDFs are in one giant list because I'm almost, I'm actually almost never going to interact with this. I can interact with it if there's a problem just to double check things, but I'm not doing the work twice. And where did you tell it, it, JSM to rename your files with the author last name date? Um, so, where is it? Under Zot File Preferences, there is the renaming rules. So, you don't need to know quite how to do this, but basically it's saying percent %A is author, percent %Y is year, percent %T is title. So. If you have a new, okay, so and this is important to understand, the older the PDF gets, the less likely it will be able to do this because old PDFs don't have advanced metadata inside of them. There's basically nothing the software can look at to pull the information out of the PDF. Um, but if it's a new one, it'll almost always be able to do it and it will just grab the data right away. And so that's why all of my PDFs, if you look at them in my base folder, and in Zotero too, Google Drive. Um, actually, I just made it. So you'll see it just it just says, um, oh, this one has two authors, so Everson and Kudia. This was published in 1998, and that's the title of it. And that's a much better naming system than 112888ABZ underscore 6S, which is sometimes how you get, wind up downloading PDFs. So this is obviously a much more human friendly way of looking at your PDF files. And in and in JurisM, it will do the same thing. Let me see here. So yeah, let me click that. Manage attachment, attachments, rename it. And yeah, it just switched it around a little for me. So that's how, uh, so I do it. And what it'll do is, uh, it actually can do two things. If the PDF doesn't have the data, but this does, it'll pull from here. And that's why it's important that this be correct. And you'll see this one happened to pull the fact that the item was in English. It doesn't always do this, um, but this is, if you're gonna do the multilingual thing, you really wanna make sure that you have, you know your, um, does everyone know what ISO is? The International Standards Organization. So you see them, they're, they're more in involved in your lives than you, you expect, they're like the Illuminati. Um, but like, so for example, the standard language code for English is EN, the standard language code for Japanese is JA. Does anybody know the standard language code for Chinese? Yeah. Nope. UTF? Nope. Z Z H. Z H for Zhongguan. Yeah, because in Pinyin, it's China is Zhongguan, which is spelled Z H O N G. So uh, don't just assume like, oh, it's gonna be this. Like, no. Like, uh, for example, what's the word for Japan? Japanese in Japanese. Nihongo. Oh, I think it's in Japan. I said, yeah. Sorry, what's Japanese in Japanese? <laughs> what's the variant? Not just Nihongo, what's the other way? Nippongo. Nippongo. But which NP, no says, but. yeah, well, which, but, well, but they could, but yeah. you know what, I, just for the sake of example, but NP means Nepalese, so, or Nepali. So like, it's good, this is something to just kind of know in the background because um, this field might get left blank and if it doesn't have the correct thing in it, it could create problems later. I've never had a disaster, but I always play it safe and I think if you're just involved with things multilingually, this is something that's important to sort of be on top of anyway. I have a question. Uh, so because you're using Google Drive to store all of your articles, if you don't have connection, do you get access to that? Yes and no. So um, as a best practice, before I'm done with things, I always hit the synchronize button. Um, in my Zotero, I always, and if I'm in a rush, if you're in a rush and you leave quickly, Google Drive will not have time to synchronize. So if you're like, download, 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 and then you shut your computer and go, when you go to like a different computer, it won't be there because Google Drive hasn't had time to synchronize just yet. Um, 
And so it actually works. But what, what it will do is if all the synchronizing, synchronizing has happened, those files will be on your computer to use offline. And then when the connection reestablishes, then Google Drive will go, oh, and it'll start synchronizing again. And same thing with Zotero or even Mendeley is the same premise. So in Mendeley, you would, you would do the, like, I'm going to hit synchronize just to be safe. Just, just a good practice to have. Yeah. So that's kind of how all of that works. And you certainly yeah. could store all of your files on your machine, but if your computer dies, which happened to you, um, <laughs> you've lost it all. Or, or you're just starting to slow down right. your machine if you have a really large Or, library. you know, some horror, or, or all of Google's data centers and a catastrophic meteorological event can be destroyed in Argentina, Utah, and, and China, and then it's all gone. The, the least likely of scenarios, but I once in a, once a week I just take a USB stick and save the whole thing just so that I know for my own comfort that I have it all. Did you? Do we know how to do that yet, or do, is that coming? Do which yeah. thing? So I'm going to show you guys really quickly how to do the file renaming and saving it to an outside location in Mendeley, and then we're going to break up into smaller okay. groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really we'll do all your all the one-on-one -on -one stuff with everybody. Yeah. Okay. So in Mendeley, you can do a lot of the things that Adam just showed yeah. for Zotero. Do that. Um, it's a little more user friendly, I think. I just go to Tools and then Options, and if you have a Mac, it might be like Tools Preferences or maybe a slightly different menu. But I have the same ability to point my Mendeley instance to a different library, a different location for it. Um, if you don't have Google Drive and you're interested in using it. Um, but you don't want to have your entire drive saved on your machine, you can do selective sync and tell it I only want to sync these folders and have these on my machine. And that's a good option for Zotero and Mendeley both. Mm -hmm. I can also sort my files into subfolders automatically. So here's my library. I do it differently than Adam. I have a folder for each author, just my preference. So it's mm -hmm. done this automatically. I have not gone in and named every folder. Right. I had better things to do, as I'm sure you do. <laughs> okay, and same thing, uh, like Adam, I have it named my articles, author, your title, just my preference, so that I can find things more easily if I ever needed to. So this is very automated here. And then also, like what you saw with Adam, I have watched folders. So mine is on my desktop. I just did something really interesting here. And I have a little folder on my desktop called Import to Mendeley. And anything that I save there gets automatically brought over. As you guys saw when it was like kind of working down at the bottom, that was pulling that over into my library, renaming it, moving it to the permanent location, doing all of that for me. Okay, so these are the more advanced features that we're happy to show you how to work with if you're interested in our hands-on portion. Any questions before we break up into groups? Okay, before you guys leave today, because um, I know some of you may need to duck out before we finish, we have a very quick kind of feedback form on this guide. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment, just let us know what you thought of the session. And if there are any other questions you have, we'll follow up with you and answer those more specifically. So, okay, great. So maybe we could have kind of a Zotero folks in one area and Mendeley folks in another. It seems like there were just a couple of people who were Mendeley users right now. And if you're feeling like switching, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. And if you want to just leave right now, because you're like, I don't need to deal with any of this, this isn't for me, that's also totally okay. <laughs> um, I'm in Mendeley, and cool. I kind of wanted to learn, is that there? Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah.